at a time we are in the midst of in terms of design just the sheer amount of conversations that are being had about design about the nature of design we felt as a design team in HFI that this is just the right moment to bring another perspective to all these conversations and that perspective is about design science to us design science is designing based on you know a very systematic body of evidence that consists of hundreds of principles and models and effects and methods this therefore is the first of a series of videos that we are going to now share with you these videos are about the a to z of design science is for contrast principle. The contrast principle explains how we constantly evaluate things in contrast with other things. And based on this very comparison, we make our decision. Okay, now this holds true with a lot of things. It could be color, shape, size, and also temperature, even taste. Let me give you an example. Which plate of food will make you feel like you've eaten more? So now you know why a dietitian would suggest you to take your meals in a smaller plate. Look at how the information here is presented to you in a really attractive comparison. That helps you take your decisions with real good ease. And for mental model. So let's say you've just checked into a hotel room after a very long flight and it's a hot day. You really want to turn on the air conditioning. So you go looking for the, the switch or the controls and you can't find that in your hotel room. You can't find it on any wall. Even near the air conditioning you can't see it. So you go looking for the remote. That would be your next instinct. And then let's say you spend a really long time looking for the remote in the room as well and you just can't find the remote control. And so you go to, you know, maybe open the windows because it's getting so stuffy and hot in there. Uh, and then, you know, you're totally frustrated because you just can't control this AC. And you call up the reception. And then the reception tells you that, you know, it's a gesture controlled, one of those updated ACs where you had to just swing your arms from any part of the room to put it on. But that didn't strike you because of your mental model. A mental model is uh, the ideas and beliefs that you have based on past experiences. So that is not the way you would have switched on an AC and that's why you were looking for controls and all of that. So this is actually an example of a design that fails because it does not take into consideration the user's mental model. So for design to be successful, it's really critical that it keeps in mind uh, and it's designed for a user's current mental model. social proof. The principle of social proof tells us that in moments of uncertainty, people get influenced by the actions and opinions of others. For example, as compared to an empty cafe, a crowded cafe is perceived as the better option. Here, the crowd validates the cafe as a successful one. Social proof can be used to help users make a decision by introducing categories such as bestsellers, most watched, most liked, etc. The number of people liking something becomes a measure of success for the others. Social proof can also be used to increase credibility. The fact that so many people are liking something and have no issues with it makes the product or service reliable. But it only works when the number of people validating it is high. 